Forget cowboys and tumbleweeds, the real Wild West was a brutal ballet of lead and smoke. And at the heart of it all stood the deadliest shooters the world had ever seen. In this video, we've got the dirt on eight gunslingers, exposing the lies, the massacres, and the body count that Hollywood conveniently forgot. So stick around to find out the shocking facts that will change everything you thought you knew about these shooters. John Wesley Hardin is a name that sends shivers down the spines of Wild West lore. This man wasn't your average gunslinger, no sir. He's reputed to have ended the lives of over 40 men, and get this, he started his career by taking someone down at just 15 years old. Renowned for his lightning draw, he justified killings as for those who needed killing. His peculiar sense of justice led to the shooting of a man for snoring loudly through a hotel wall. He spent ages dodging the long arm of the law, constantly on the move, but as fate would have it, his luck ran out. A Texas Ranger caught up with him in 1895 and ended Hardin's wild ride once and for all. Wyatt Earp was a big deal in the Wild West. His claim to fame was the infamous OK Corral showdown in Tombstone, Arizona. But that wasn't where it all began for this deadly shooter. Born in Illinois, Earp started from scratch, with no fancy pistols or cowboy boots at the get-go. As he trotted out west, Earp tried on various lawman hats, sheriff, constable, even a stint as a deputy US marshal. But wait, there's more. This guy wore more hats than a hat store. He was a professional gambler, ran a brothel, did some bouncer action, and mixed drinks as a bartender. Earp was like the Johnny Appleseed of the Wild West, roaming from town to town, sniffing out opportunities to make a quick buck. His travels even took him as far as Alaska, where he raked in cash like it was going out of style, running a saloon, and scoring over 80 grand roughly two million bucks in today's money. Don't let the bartender gig fool you. Earp was also one of the most feared gunslingers. The OK Corral shootout, that's the showdown that put him on the Wild West map. He, Doc Holliday, and Virgil Earp faced off against five rascals from the Cowboys gang. By the time the dust settled, three Cowboys were out for the count, and the other two were sprinting out of there, leaving Earp and his crew waving the victory flag. After all that action, Wyatt decided to pen an autobiography, Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal. And guess what? It was hotter than a branding iron in July, becoming a bestseller. Hollywood also hitched its wagon to his story, making movies left, right, and center about this Wild West legend. Jesse James, the famous leader of the James Younger Gang, claimed around 17 lives, though some suggest a higher toll. During the American Civil War, Jesse James and his brother Frank teamed up with pro-Confederate guerrillas, known as Bushwhackers, stirring up trouble in Missouri and Kansas. Under the wings of leaders like William Quantrill and Bloody Bill Anderson, they got tangled in some nasty accusations accused of committing atrocities against Union soldiers and abolitionists, including the gruesome Centralia Massacre in 1864. Post-war shenanigans turned into quite the duo of outlaws, these James brothers. Robbing banks, stagecoaches, and trains became their forte across the Midwest. Surprisingly, despite their ruthless crimes, they earned quite the national fame and even some public sympathy. Their prime time as gang members, though, stretched from around 1866 to 1876. Sure, they tried to keep their outlaw gig going, recruiting new people into the mix, but the law wasn't playing around. Law enforcement had a bullseye on their backs, getting closer and closer to bringing them to justice. Then came April 3rd, 1882. Jesse James got caught in a twist of fate. Robert Ford, a newbie in the gang, took the opportunity to grab the reward on James's head. That's the day Jesse James got shot and called it quits, all thanks to a fellow gang member aiming for that cash reward and a pardon for his own crimes. Billy the Kid was another bad boy of the Wild West. He was born William H. Bonney, who didn't exactly have the smoothest start in life. He lost his parents at 14, and well, let's just say he didn't turn to baking cookies to cope. He dived headfirst into the thug life, learning the ropes quicker than a rattlesnake strike. He hustled, gambled, and took odd jobs, always eyeing the next big hustle. What put him on the wanted posters, you ask? Horse thievery. When he headed out west, Lincoln, New Mexico, became his stomping ground for mayhem. It was there that he made headlines for taking a life. That led to an all-expenses-paid indictment for murder. And guess what? That was just the beginning of his wild rampage. Billy the Troublemaker kept adding notches to his gun belt by offing more and more people. He had the law on his tail, and let me tell you, he didn't just go quietly into the night. 
He went down guns blazing, making sure a couple of deputy sheriffs met their maker before he rode off into the sunset. The law finally caught him courtesy of Sheriff Pat Garrett in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. That was the end of Billy the Kid, or so they say. Some people swear he faked his death, continuing to roam the Wild West like some ghostly legend. Tom Horn, a versatile figure, held roles as a cowboy, soldier, and lawman. Renowned as a hired gun, he's linked to 17 killings across the West. However, his most notorious act was the killing of a 14-year-old boy, sealing his fate with a hanging. Horn was a chillingly calculated killer, operating without hesitation motivated solely by financial gain. He was always ready to kill people for money, which made him even more famous in the history of the Wild West. Despite his diverse professional background, his image as a cruel hired gun will always be remembered as a stark reminder of how bleak justice was on the frontier. Let's talk about Wild Bill Hickok, a figure often dubbed as one of the most lethal gunslingers of the Wild West. His trademark was those two Colt 1851 Navy revolvers with ivory grips and nickel plating, now displayed at the Adams Museum in Deadwood, South Dakota. Hickok had a distinct way of carrying those guns, a cavalry draw, somewhat like a reverse draw you'd see today, akin to an inside the waistband holder set up for a cross draw. Hickok's resume reads like a novel, gambler, actor, soldier, spy, scout, marksman, you name it. While some stories about his exploits might have been exaggerated, nobody could deny the man had a personality as vast as the frontier. They say he had a tally of over 100 men to his name and engaged in numerous gunfights. But one of his standout duels was with Davis Tutt, where he nailed a shot from 75 yards, a feat that would impress even by today's standards. Hickok met his end in a rather tragic way. Jack McCall fired a fatal shot at the back of his head while Hickok was engrossed in a game of five-card stud. His life has been depicted in numerous movies, books, and stories, keeping the legends of his wild, adventurous life burning bright even today. James Killer Miller stands as one of the most sinister figures of the Old West a hired assassin responsible for at least 14, possibly 50, lives taken. He had this dual persona, known as Deacon Jim, for his church visits and clean living, yet his other side was chillingly different. He'd murder anyone for cash, with rates varying from $150 to $2,000 per kill. His targets ranged from political figures to even Sheriff Pat Garrett, the famous lawman. One showdown with Sheriff Bud Fraser saw Miller surviving a shootout thanks to a hidden metal plate under his shirt, deflecting Fraser's bullets. Arrested in 1909 for US Marshal Gus Bobita's murder, a vengeful mob lynched him and three other outlaws. Before his hanging, wearing his hat defiantly, Miller allegedly shouted, let her rip, before willingly meeting his end, captured in a haunting photograph marking the grim finale of this remorseless killer's tale. John King Fisher was a less talked about but notably violent gunfighter of the Old West. He had a rap sheet that started from the tender age of 16, cycling in and out of prison. By the 1870s, Fisher rode the outlaw trail raiding ranches in Mexico with a famous gang. His flashy attire decked out in bright colors and his twin ivory-handled pistols made him stand out. But his aggressive nature truly set him apart. He had a track record for not just gunning down three of his own gang members over a cash dispute, but also taking out seven Mexican bandits. One wild story even claims he faced off against four cowboys from Mexico, using a branding iron and his guns. It showed his ruthless style by taking down unarmed opponents. In 1884, Fisher met his end in an ambush alongside gunslinger Ben Thompson, at the hands of associates seeking revenge for a previous gunfight. What do you think about these deadliest shooters in history? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and check out our channel for more interesting videos. See you in the next video.